This is the day that has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Let us stand. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Thank you. 
to the throne of grace. Let the church stay there. Go. 
Amen. Our scripture this morning comes to us from the book of John, the fourth chapter, beginning at the 11th verse. John, the fourth chapter, the 11th through the 25th verse. John, the fourth chapter, beginning at the 11th through the 25th verse. Amen. I will be reading from the King James Version. And it reads, The woman said unto him, Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. And whence then hast thou that living water? Art thou greater than our father Jacob, which gave us the well, and drank there of himself, and his children, and his cattle? Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give, him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. The woman said unto him, Sir, give me this water that I thirst not. Neither come hither to draw. Jesus said unto her, Go call thy husband and come hither. The woman answered and said, I have no husband. Jesus said unto her, Thou hast said well, I have no husband. For thou hast had five husbands, and he whom thou hast is not thy husband. In that says thou truth. The woman said unto him, Sir, I perceive that you are the prophet. Our fathers worship in this mountain, and ye say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. Jesus said unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour will come when ye shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. Ye worship, ye know not what. Ye know what we worship. For salvation is of the Jews. But the hour cometh and is now when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such a worship. God is spirit. And they that worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. The woman said unto him, I know that Messiah come, which is called Christ. When he is come, he will tell us all things. The word of God for the people of God. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Let us stand in 69 from all that dwell below the sky. Oh, 
to give through the cash app. And dollar sign G. Bethel Sylvania. Dollar sign G. Bethel Sylvania. You
the Leadership Congress, it will be in July, July the 20th through the 23rd. Pardon me, I said the 19th earlier, but it will be the 20th through the 23rd at the Augusta Marriott um, at the Convention Center in Augusta, Georgia. The registration is $75 for each adult and $25 for each youth. Okay, so um, for more information, uh, just see me after service and I'll explain that to you all. Um, biblical discussion will be on Wednesdays. We're still doing virtual. We're still, we're still doing virtual until further notice. So please log in Facebook Live um, and join us for a biblical discussion. All right, that concludes our announcements. And once again, it's so good to see all of you. Remember, he who puts his trust in the Lord will not be left to confusion because he is a strong tower. The righteous can run unto him and they are saved. God bless you all. Thank you. Amen. 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 We'd like to thank our secretary for those announcements. Are there any other announcements or anything anyone would like to add at this time? Again, it's so good to be back with you. Amen. 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 It's been quite a long time. We've been hitting and missing, but nevertheless, God is good. Amen. 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 We are looking forward to getting our house back in order. Amen. 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 So with that being said, let us spread the word that we are back open uh, for regular service. That is first through the fourth Sunday, 11 a.m. Amen. 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 Also, Sunday school at 10 o'clock. Amen. 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 Now, let us not forget to pray for those who are going through those who are suffering, those who are in need of prayer. Uh, let us not forget to pray for uh, the Roberts family, amen, the Zika Roberts family, uh, the Washington family, amen. Uh, let us keep them in prayer. And families that we don't know of, let us also keep them in prayer too, amen. Amen, amen. amen. Some point in time, there's going to be a time where you're going through, where you're going to need somebody to pray for you, amen. Amen. Also, on next Sunday, we will uh, be preparing for a baptism. Amen. So, uh, trustees, on Saturday evening, let us uh, come together and fill the baptismal pool so that it will be ready for baptism on next Sunday. Amen. 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 That's something to celebrate about. Amen. 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 And I do believe not only will we be having one, but I'm waiting to hear back from um, another member who uh, has a child who wants to be baptized. So we look forward to the two baptisms on next Sunday. Amen. 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 God is good. All and all the time. Amen. Amen. Are there any other announcements at this time? The other announcement would be uh, the radio station, uh, Brother Washington, our very own. He is a host on the radio station, amen, and he is constantly promoting Greater Better. And we like to thank God for him doing the due diligence of the work of the Lord. So we ask that you tune in to the radio station, 88. Five. Amen. On your FM dial. That's how I used to say it when I was growing up. Amen. 88.5 on your FM dial. Please tune in on Tuesdays. It's just changed. Changed. Okay. I'll be, I'll be on the air starting tomorrow at 3 o'clock until 4. And then Tuesday through Friday, I'll be on the air from 3 until 5. So tune in because I'm really greater Bethel out there. I'm putting them out there. I might get in trouble for some of the stuff I've been saying, but it's all right. We got the baddest choir in Savannah. Amen. Y'all can, can put them sanctified hands together. Amen. We got the baddest choir in Savannah. So I've been putting it out. So y'all tune in. Starting tomorrow, Pastor heard me 
on Friday, and he's very, very impressed. Amen. Amen. Thank you again, Brother Ezekiel Roberts. I was counting to be on there now. I heard the last Tuesday. It was Tuesday evening, I think it was about 6 or 6.30. Our pastor was on there now. I don't forget our pastor. Well, I know we do that. He has really 6.30 on Tuesdays. 6.30 on Tuesday. Tune in. Whoever stays up in the Sylvania area, 6.30, pastor will be preaching. Yeah. And pastor, while I got the mic, I'm going to go ahead and do this. Yes, sir. Y'all notice I've been sitting down lately. I got to have a heart transplant very, very soon. I went to the doctor on Thursday. I think even Pastor posted. My heart is very weak. Very weak. I gotta have a toe amputated this coming week. So y'all free for me. I've been, I've been, I'm full of staying home, but I can't stay home. When you direct, when you direct for 37 years, it's in your blood. It's in your blood. So I got to come. So y'all pray for me. Y'all pray for me. Y'all pray for me. Amen, amen, amen. Again, let us continue to keep Brother Washington in prayer. As you can tell, uh, he is going through. Now, I'm not one to put anyone's business out. So when I say pray for someone, unless they tell me to put it out, I'm not going to put out what's going on. I'm just going to ask you to pray for me. Amen? Amen. 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 So if you if I'm asking you to pray for somebody, they already need to pray. Amen. 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 Any other announcements? Anything anyone would like to add at this time? If there's nothing else, we're gonna ask that the officers come and help us with our tithe and offering while they're doing that. We're gonna ask that the musicians give us some traveling music. The choir will come back and give us a selection. Then we will come back and do what said the Lord. Amen. Amen. Again, please feel free to give through the cash app at dollar sign G Bethel Sylvania. Dollar sign G Bethel Sylvania. Please take direction from the ocean.
Lord, let's give the Lord some praise in here. We can do better than that. Act like it really did. We ought to tell God, thank you for not passing us by during this pandemic. We ought to tell God, thank you for not passing me by and leaving me by the wayside. God is good all the time and all the time God is good. Pass me not, O gentle Savior, but hear my humble cry. today for being able to worship one more time because we could have been dead sleeping in our graves but God saw fit for our days to roll on just a little while longer and I thank God for the opportunity Amen. to be here standing in the midst of his people being able to bring a word Amen? Amen. Amen This morning let us notice the book of John the 4th chapter the 25th through the 29th verse John the Fourth chapter, the 25th through the 29th verse. Amen. John 4, 25 through 29. Amen. It reads, The woman said to him, I know that the Messiah is coming, he who is called Christ. When he comes, he will tell us all things. Jesus said to her, Jesus said to her, I who speak to you am he. When just then the disciples came back, they marveled that he was talking with the woman. But no one said, what do you seek? Or why are you talking with her? So the woman left her water jar at and went away into town and said to the people, come see a man who told me all that I ever did. Can this be the Christ? They went out of the town and were coming to him. Amen. Amen. The word of God for the people of God, blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. We use for a subject, come see a man. Come see a man. Amen. I'm reminded of a story of a young man by the name of Henry. Henry was a very old and elderly man, and he was very unhappy because he had lost his favorite hat. Most of us who have a favorite hat, we can relate to this, amen. 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 Some of us wear the same old hat every day. It doesn't matter if it's clean or if it's dirty, but that hat, we have attachment to it, so we realize and understand that sometimes our personal possessions are very important to us. He decided that he would go to the church instead of buying one. He would wait until everyone was seated and he would go into the vestibule and steal one. He waited until the worshipers were busy praying. And he decided that he would go into the door and seek him a hat. While doing so, the ushers were on their jobs. They found that he was walking in during prayer and they took him and ushered him into the church. And he sat in a pew and while he was sitting there, he listened to the entire sermon on the Ten Commandments. After the service, Henry met the pastor in the vestibule doorway. He shook his head vigorously and he was upset as he told him, thank you preacher for your very inspiring, soul-saving word today. Preacher said, you're welcome, but it's not me, it's the Lord who gives the word, I'm just a vessel. Amen. He said, I, 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 I came to church today to steal a hat. And after hearing your sermon on the Ten Commandments, I decided that I wasn't going to do it again. The pastor answered, you mean the Ten Commandments, thou shall not steal? Change your mind? He said, no. The one about adultery did. As soon as you said that, I remember where I left my hat. The moral of the story is, not only can God change you, but he will remind you where you used to be. 
prior to our text, there was a woman speaking with Jesus. This woman, she was a Samaritan. And during this time, it was the practice that Jews and Samaritans did not intermingle with one another. You know how some of our cultures are today. Some whites don't mix with blacks. Some Asians won't mix with blacks. Some Hispanics won't intermingle with any other race. The Jews separate themselves from just about everyone. So here in the text we are seeing that it was the practice during this time that these Jews and the Samaritans did not intermingle with one another. Their history goes back to a place where disagreement and wars and differences and worship and miscommunication resulted in simmering hatred that divided the people of Israel that were once brothers. Today, if we were to look around, we have some brothers and some sisters suffering from that very same issue today. You have some brothers who did not agree with what was going on in the church during a long period of time ago, and they decided that they leave that church and start their own church on the corner. All because of some miscommunication or some misunderstanding. You have brothers and sisters warring against each other today because they didn't understand or mistook what was said by the other person and sometimes they didn't get that word directly from the other person. They got it through the air. In rumors. This text speaks volumes today. If only we could meet in the middle and iron out the issues that are plaguing us today. I wonder where would we be in this world? How much more advanced we would be if we could just come together and iron out the issues. I heard my father say this to me a long time ago. He said, son, there is nothing that can't be worked out over a cup of coffee and some time. This text speaks volumes. As a matter of fact, this is the longest conversation that Jesus has ever had with anyone in the Bible besides the disciples. And this conversation was a woman that, 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 that her culture did not get along with. Amen. Now Jesus was seen by Jacob's will. He was in Samaria. And at about noon, because he was tired from his journey, while he sat there, there was a woman, a Samaritan, who came to draw water, and Jesus began to speak to her. Amen. First thing Jesus said to her was, give me a drink of water. Now, with this, it began a conversation, and Jesus began to teach from this conversation. Jesus began to teach the difference between physical water and spiritual water. And some of us, we're so stuck on the physical, we can't see the spiritual. Some of us are so stuck on the physical, we can't feel the spiritual. Some of us are so stuck on the physical. What I'm trying to say is, some of us, if we can't see it, if we can't taste it, if we can't smell it, if we can't, can't put our hands on it, then and that's a major problem today in this world yes, that's the reason why so many of us don't believe in God because we can't touch him we can't smell him, we can't see him we can't physically do these things and, and, and it disrupts where we should be spiritually a lot of us won't pray because, because we, we, we don't have that spiritual connection with God like we ought to have because we can't see him in the physical but let me tell you something, if you can just put your physical aside for a little while and, and, and ease, increase the spiritual, I guarantee you, when you put your spiritual out front, you'll be able to feel God the way that you want to feel him. You'll be able to see God the way that 
you want to see. You'll be able to touch God the way that you want to touch him. Amen. If you can just put your spiritual out front. But Jesus began to teach. He said, everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again. In other words, this physical water that I give you, if you continue to drink from it, you're going to want some more. Uh, you're going to always be looking for this water that I give you physically. But whosoever drinks of the water that I give, you got to understand that when Jesus gives you water, you won't be thirsting anymore. Whoever drinks of the water that I give will be coming here a spring of water welling up to eternal life. In other words, when you got me, you don't need nothing else. When you got me, you don't have to worry when your next meal is coming from. When you got me, you don't have to worry where your next drink is coming from. When you got me, you don't have to worry about where your clothes are coming from, where your healing is coming from, where your spiritual praise is coming from. If you got me, you got all that you need. After Jesus had told her all about herself, she left. She was so excited about what Jesus had told her, she left her pot on the ground and began to run into the city. Uh, has, has Jesus ever done anything for you that got you excited? Got you so excited that you forgot about something that you were doing just so you could go tell somebody about what God has done for you? Has he ever done anything for you? It's been many times in my life where I could have been dead. Went off the road several times in cars. Cars could have flipped over. And, and, and there was time that I, I hurt myself so bad that the doctor said they couldn't really do anything. That, 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 that this type of surgery can't be conducted. And, 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 and somehow or another, there was one person who could do the surgery. And, and he was on the golf course. And we were flying in to take care of you. I'm, I'm so happy that Jesus can take care of his people. I hear a lot of people say, I ain't supposed to be here today. I was supposed to be dead a long time ago. No, no, no. I'm supposed to be here. Yeah, if you're living right now, you're supposed to be here. Yeah. God has a purpose for you. Do you know what your purpose is? Have you come to the throne and ask God, what is it that you want me to do? But this young lady... She left everything, left her pot. She forgot all about her physical water because he had told her about a water that he gives that she will never ever thirst anymore. And when she got into the city, she cried out. She cried out, and I can imagine how she sounded when she got into the city and she said, Come see a man who told me all about myself. Come see a man. Amen. Three points today. Number one. What are you looking for? A lot of us today, we're just living. You wake up in the morning, you have no purpose. We're just living. A lot of us from day to day don't know what we're going to do. We're just living. A lot of us outside in, in, in society, we get up, no purpose. We're just living. Don't know what we're going to do. Don't have nobody to depend on. Don't pray to anybody. We don't call on anybody. We just here existing. But what are you looking for? Some of us are here today. We don't know what we came to church for this morning. Uh oh. Some, some of us, we just know that we're supposed to be in church on Sunday. But I'm here today to tell you that if you come to church, if you come to the Lord, then you ought to come looking for something. Huh? I, I, I remember a preacher preached, what did you bring to the party? Huh? Every Sunday we come into the sanctuary, it is supposed to be a, a, a spiritual party for the Lord. Now I'm asking today, when you come into the sanctuary, you're supposed to come in with thanksgiving and praise in your heart. When you get here, what did you bring and what are you looking for? Come to the party. 
You can't come to the party not looking for anything. You should be coming here looking for salvation, looking for your soul to be saved. You should be coming in here trying to get a word to help us get better than where we are right now. We should be coming in here uh, looking for the Lord to bless us with what we're dealing with in the present so that we can be okay in the future. You ought to come in here telling God, thank you for what you've done for me. You ought to come in here looking for something. Number two, your stuff down. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Uh, there was a young lady by the name of Erica Badu. She sung the song. The song was called Bad Lady. Bad Lady, you gonna hurt your back. Carrying all them bags like that. Mm. What she was saying is, uh, spiritually, some of these people walk around carrying things in their spirit that don't necessarily need to be carried. Amen. Oh, y'all don't understand me this morning. If you understood what I was saying right then, then you would start giving God some praise because you understand that there are some things that we're carrying right now that needs to be put down and left alone. What I'm trying to tell you today is there are a lot of us here today who are carrying things in our spirit that need to be put and put aside and left alone because you don't need to carry some of the mess that you're carrying in your spirit that hate, that jealousy, the dishonor, the lying, the cheating, the stealing. Put it down. Stop carrying that mess with you. Some of us, we still self conscious. We hurt ourselves, worrying about the other people are thinking of us, and the reality is ain't nobody even thinking about you because you ain't even making a splash in society like you should be. Amen. You're walking around hiding within yourself and no one even notices you, but you're so busy, worried about who's paying attention to you, you can't even get your life together. Amen. Put that stuff down. Number three, Number three. come to Jesus. Amen. See, all of these things build up to the coming of Jesus. When you need to put this stuff down, you need to know what you're looking for. If you knew what you were looking for, and if you put that stuff down, it'll all go away when you come to Jesus. Oh my God. This woman at the well, we gotta understand sometimes that 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 all the time you don't have to come to Jesus. Sometimes Jesus will come to you. Y'all ain't shouting about nothing today. Sometimes Jesus will come to you. There's been plenty of times where people were out doing something that they had no business doing, and Jesus met them where they were. There are a lot of people in the Bible who didn't get up and come to Jesus, but when Jesus was walking through, somebody heard him, and he noticed them, and Jesus came to them. And then in other instances, there were people who knew who Jesus was, and when they saw him walking, they came to Jesus. What I'm telling you today is no matter if Jesus comes to you or you go to him, somewhere in the middle, there should be a connection with the master. You ought to be reaching out to Jesus every chance that you get so that your future may be brighter. Many Samaritans here in the Bible from that town believed in him because of the woman's testimony. Amen. That woman cried out in that city. Now this was an a extraordinary woman. She had already had five husbands and the one that she was with right then <laughs> wasn't even hers. So I need you to understand that, that it doesn't matter how sinful you are. It doesn't matter how prideful you are, what you have going on, uh, if you give a testimony uh, about what God has done for you, somebody's going to listen. Uh, the Bible says that the Samaritans from that town believed in him because of the woman's testimony. How many of you today believe in Jesus because of your mother's testimony? How many of you today can say God is real because of your father's testimony? She said, he told me 
all that I ever did. So when the Samaritans came to him, they asked him to stay with them. And he stayed there two more days. And many more believed because of his word. They said to the woman, it's no longer because of what you said that we believe. For we have heard ourselves and we know that this is indeed the Savior of the world. The Bible says after two days, he departed for Galilee. For Jesus himself had testified that a prophet has no honor in his own hometown. So when he came to Galilee, the Galileans welcomed him, having seen all that he had done in Jerusalem at the feast. For they too had gone to the feast. I want you to know today, and I'm through. I want you to know today that Jesus is able to do just what he said he would do. Amen. 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 All you have to do is come see a man. Amen. Come see a man yes. named Jesus. He told this woman all about herself. The same Jesus that died on the cross for you and for me. The same Jesus who had nails driven in his hand. The same Jesus who was pierced in the side, bled and died. The same Jesus who was taken off the cross, put in the tomb, and on the third day he got up with all power in his hand. The same Jesus that had the stone rolled away.
would be able to take the Holy Sacrament to their company. The, the communion has already been consecrated privately before you have come into the sanctuary. But you that do truly and earnestly repent of your sins and are in love and charity with your name and intend to lead a new life following the commandments of God and walking from henceforth in his holy way. Draw near with faith. Take this holy sacrament to your comfort and make your own confession to Almighty God. Let us bow our heads and pray the general confession. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thoughts, word, and deed against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us, we do earnestly repent and are honestly sorry for these our misdoing. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. Have mercy upon us, have mercy upon us, most merciful Father, for your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake. Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in the newness of life to the honor and glory of your name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Those of you who have the Holy Sacrament before you, the body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, broken for you and for me, take and eat. The blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ shed for you and for me on Calvary. Take and drink. Do this in remembrance of me until my coming again. Let us pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever. Amen. My brothers and my sisters, You've run well for the past 30 days. You intend to lead a new life. You may rise and go in peace. Let us stand all over the sanctuary as we dismiss.